for today. I'm not going to be filming that much. Starting out a bit mellow, testing the legs, left calf is feeling good. So yeah, let's do this. I can't believe I'm here. It's really freaking exciting. I'm glad to make it to the start line alive and well. miles in. So far so good. It's a bit of a puzzling game to figure out the pace that's right, but around 6.30 it seems to settle in alright. Just saw two people slamming flat out on the ground at the water station. Slightly feeling the left half. It's about 12 km, so I'm dialing it back a little bit. Heart rate is good, but I really don't want to push too soon. Almost nine miles in. Heart rate was a bit higher than I expected. I really do think I lost some fitness last few weeks here. Heart rate is 159, 160, so gotta dial it back a little. And it's not gonna feel much. Have fun? Oh yeah, how about you? Good luck. Half marathon in about 126. 126.10. So 13 miles in, 21K. And my left calf is giving me major havoc. 630s I cannot hold anymore. So I'm really gonna dial it back. It looks like 645, 650 feels a bit better. Going to run in the moment. Oh, my parents, that was fun. Seeing the family, well, that gives you energy. Anyways, gonna do everything I can to run relax, run in the moment. Look at this crowd support. It's not the engine. It's not the breathing, it's not the heart rate. It's the left calf that is super tight. That is painful, so going to dial it back a bit. Really want to do everything I can to run on the sub three at least. So let's take this step by step. Well done, man. Mile 15. Look at this energy. That doesn't give you energy. I don't know what will. Two voices in my head. One is like pity party for my left calf. And then that one I override quite quickly with run the moment you are in. Enjoy this experience. It's only 15 miles in, I'm already emotional. <laughs> Comfort level six, almost seven out of ten. Uh, seen so many good signs on the side of the road. They really help take your mind off things. Running just in a moment. 16 miles in. Time for some more caffeine. 
actually help a little. I can definitely use a little pick-me-upper here. Thank you. Really tough day in the office. <laughs> it's literally focusing on the moment. It's rough. Legs are hurting, calf is sensitive. Well, 26.53. Five is incredible. So we're gonna dig deep. Still on pace for sub three, but gotta keep digging here. It's gonna be a rough last few miles, but gotta do everything we can. 21 mile in. Hey! Run into David. Hey guys. <laughs> oh, hard rate guy. Crushing right it over here. <laughs> this awesome. is awesome. Well, keep charging, man. All right, you too. Yeah, have a good one. All right. Twenty two and a half miles. I'm definitely fading, but all I'm thinking about is stay on that blue line, put one foot in front of the other, and enjoy the process. Mile 24, 709 ish. Twenty-five miles down. Oh, almost there. This is so hard. I'm running six, seven, twenty-minute mile, and it feels like six-minute miles. Oh. Come on. You got this. That's it, I can smell the finish line. That's it. I've been dreaming for years to run under here. And here we are, heading towards the finish line of the Berlin Marathon. Sadie and Zoe, this one is for you guys. Daddy can do hard things, and marathons are hard. And I know you can do hard things in your life as well. So happy. Look at that. Beauty. Well worth it. World major number four. Third one and there's three. Thank you. Get myself a blanket. Oh, I don't have to rush and drink it. I can just drink it. <laughs> Anyone has a question? Please, we have so many. Can I have another one? <laughs> the post marathon. Hi. Holy smack. That was. No joke. No, I don't. Cheers. got through the finish line, ran into Dimitri. And Dimitri is part of the PB program and he just ran a 2.52. Yay! <laughs> so five minute PB. So 
thanks to the program. <laughs> no, but that's so that's so awesome to hear. You were holding back at the beginning, right? Yeah. She's holding back, and after that, I was just just picking out the pace a little bit, then just a little bit more and a little bit more. Love that. Nice work, man. Thanks. <laughs> wow. Made it past the finish line under three hours. That was so brutal. That was really no joke. I'll just share a few things here. Um, going into the race, my training was going very well. I felt very confident. Going into it all, I had some killer workouts. Things were really lining up good. Like two workouts that really stand out to me. One was a test half marathon at the one of my peak weeks, about four weeks out. I was doing 60 mile week, 65, 68 mile weeks. And then I did a half marathon in one hour, 19 minutes and whatever, 20 seconds. That was my fastest half marathon. And so, yeah, that gave me a lot of confidence. I was able to hold whatever, 603, 604, 602 minute mile pace confidently for a half marathon. And it felt controlled, heart rate was, relative low in the low 150s, mid 150s, felt good. Did a 17 miler with four times three miles in there. Once again, same heart rate, like mid 150s. Was able to hold 605, 604, 603 minute mile pace. Felt really good. Then about three weeks out from race day, I had my last workout. The following day, I was gonna have a rest day, and a friend asked, hey, do you wanna go for a run? And I was kind of thinking like, ah, oh, it should be a rest day, but let's go for a mellow run. At that moment, my car broke down when I was gonna go meet up with him. And so I ended up having to run for two miles to meet up with him. And then I ran faster than I should have to meet up with him. Then we ran six miles together. So I ended up running eight miles while I actually should have taken a rest day. And the following day, my calf started hurting. And I was like, uh-oh, this was about three weeks out from race day. I took a few days off from running and tried to run on it, and it still hurt. Took two days off from running, tried it again, and it was still a three out of 10 discomfort level. And at that point, I got a bit concerned. All right, I really should take completely off. I literally only ran 0.5 miles or something in, in that test run. And then I called it and I just walked back home. So I ended up not running for about two and a half weeks before the marathon. Did a little test run just a few days ago over here and it felt okay. Absolutely know that I lost some fitness, but it was my main goal at that point just to get healthy to the start line and to be able to run this world major. It is a big goal of mine to run all six world majors under three hours. How much under three, I honestly don't care about. You might have heard of the five different stages that people can go through in a situation like this. And dealing with challenges or dealing with grief or dealing with injuries. First stage is denial, disbelief, then anger, then bargain, depression, and acceptance. Very often when a runner gets injured, there is really that phase. You're like, you simply cannot believe it happened. You're in that denial phase. Then there's that anger phase. You really get, get angry, like what happened? Then there's the bargaining. You try to still get creative with how can we get out of this or how can we deal with this the quickest way possible? And then you actually realize that it is an injury or it is serious. There's the depression phase and then there's the acceptance. Three weeks ago, when I realized that my PB was probably out of the window and I should not run for three weeks. I realized there's five stages of this whole process is the more time that we spend in that anger and disbelief and depression phase, all that negative energy, it's not really doing much for you. So this time around, as a running coach, I know that these are the stages that people go through. Like I see it all the time in our personal best running coaching program as well. I decided instead of losing a lot of negative energy over this, let's just skip the anger and depression and disbelief phase and just accept I should not run on this calf for at least the next two and a half weeks here. And so that's what I did. Ended up going straight to the acceptance phase and doing whatever I could do within my control. And that's something that I would recommend you as well. Don't get stuck in that denial phase for too long, in that anger, in that depression, in that 
that whole stage, it's all negative energy. So the sooner that you can go to that acceptance phase, the better that you can work on a solution over here. So you can still do a lot with rest, with self massage, with seeing a professional, like working with a physical therapist, working with a doctor, looking what really is going on over here in your body and specifically making an action plan over there. Very many times you will see that people think they're gonna lose all of this fitness. So they start overdoing it, even though they're half injured. They start to overdo it in the taper phase. And that's when the trouble starts. You can do a lot more damage at that point. So two and a half weeks not running might not be ideal for your fitness level. I understand that as well. And it can be mentally hard when all you wanna do is finish your training cycle good and you think all your fitness goes out of the window. Well, if you can't make it to the start line healthy, then you're not gonna have a race at all. So on race day, I ended up starting the first mile 6.40, second mile around 6.30, and that felt really good, felt confident. Then I ended up running about the first 10K around 6.30 pace, and I was like, yes, it's feeling good. Then I started feeling a two out of 10 discomfort in my left calf. I was like, uh-oh. By mile eight, it was a three out of 10. And by the half marathon point, it was a six to seven out of 10 pain, discomfort in my left calf. And I got very concerned that I wouldn't be able to finish the marathon at all, that I would have the DNF because my calf was so sensitive and so painful. So I ended up dialing back the running intensity quite a bit. Instead of trying to run 630s, I ended up running 640s, 650s. Yes, I was gonna lose some time, but at least the discomfort level kind of went down quite a bit. But I did notice I wasn't running very relaxed. I was running pretty tense. And when I run tight, when I run tense, I just noticed my heart rate goes up quite a bit. When I can't get into a real relaxed rhythm, when all I'm thinking about is, all right, let's hope that my calf holds, let's... So I had to continuously tell myself to let's just run in the moment. Let's get our mind off the body and let's just be present. Let's run every mile, run the mile I'm in. Take it one mile at a time. Let's dial back the intensity a little bit. But when I'm running at some point seven minute miles and my heart rate was 160, something was off. Something was not how it was going in training. And so at some point you have to make some adjustments. So after a while, my goal shifted from let's run the best time that I can to let's do everything I can to still find a way to get under three hours to that finish line. And this is one of those things, running marathons are exceptionally hard. And you can really go from a two out of 10 discomfort level to a seven, eight, nine out of 10 discomfort level. But as the finish line was getting closer, I was seeing other people were having challenges too. People were cramping up left and right. People were having a hard time. And all I was thinking about was let's put one foot in front of the other. And I'm not gonna lie, I was so happy when the finish line was so there. I got emotional. Like even at the start line when, when the gun was about to go off, I was already emotional. And then when I was running it, I was just very happy that I made it to the start line healthy. And then when the race didn't go according to plan, I ended up adjusting that part too and getting to the finish line still healthy, alive and well. 2.57.50, that was what was on my watch. I haven't seen the official time yet. And next year, I'm going to be running Tokyo and London. So super excited for all of this. It was once again a good reminder to never underestimate how hard marathons are. But yeah, then again, we can do hard things. I look back at this training cycle and learned once again a lot of things. Several sessions went very well. Some sessions I had to be flexible with. The family is always a priority for me, so there was yeah, I can only handle so much training volume, but really enjoyed this training cycle. It went very well. And then when it didn't go according to plan, it was once again one of those domino things. I knew I had to take a rest day. Ended up saying yes to a run that I should not have said yes to. Then the car broke down, ended up 
should not have like tried to run over to the start to meet him. So it's like this domino thing. It's never one thing that goes wrong. So yeah, learning some things from there. Going to be integrating some more strength training, some more mobility, probably a bit more frequent self-massage and working with a PT as well. So um, yeah, all different takeaways over there. Running finish times are just times, honestly. And I think you can see a personal best in different ways other than your finish time too. For me, a personal best is also showing up the best way that you can, even when you experience challenges. And that can be within your running, that can be within your professional life at work, that can be within your family life. I really have to sometimes take a deep breath when you get injured, not to get too caught up in it. As in, yes, you're a runner, but we're doing this for fun and there's a lot of things outside of running too that can bring us joy. And I'm a non-elite runner. I'm just here to see what I can do. And that is not always pushing for another personal best. That can also be how do you deal with challenges when the training might not go 100% according to plan. And how do you show up on race day still given the challenges that you experience in training. The Berlin Marathon has been an absolutely incredible experience over here. It was so nice to see and meet many other members from the Personal Best program at our group shakeout run. Uh, there were members from the Extra Mileage community, from the Path Projects community. We had a shakeout run at Tear Garden and there were more than 50, 55, 60 people that showed up. I was absolutely blown away. Members from all over the world. It was so cool. Such a diverse international group of people just sharing the love for running and meeting in a place like this. Meeting old friends, me making new friends. So that was really good. Coach Ben Edesai came out from New Zealand to help guide a warm up routine, a cool down routine. We talked through marathon strategy to pacing through nutrition. That's what it's all about. Like meeting up with other people. Yeah, different stories from around the world about training, racing and daily life. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Not, not every run goes according to plan. Not every race goes according to plan. Not every training cycle goes according to plan. And I think the way we respond to that, that's what really matters. Like yes, in an ideal world, we have this perfect plan and we follow everything and everything goes perfect on race day. There's very few people that that happens to. So realize that and embrace that. I would love to hear what has been one lesson or takeaway from you in one of your recent training or racing cycles. Anything that went according to plan or anything that did not go according to plan. Please let me know in the comments below over here. So Floris has just finished his race and he's now trying to attempt to walk it up some stairs. Let's see how this goes. Well, I've been standing here for a while, <laughs> trying to decide how. <laughs> Oh, I think we already arrived here. <laughs>